Hello and welcome to part two of our cinematography series. Here again with Paul Howard. Hello, Paul. Hi, Phil. Uh, today we're going to look at how to set up a tripod. Yep. Let's do it. Very basic, but it's very important, I'd say. So we have a Miller Compass 25 here, which is a 100 mil bowl, which is which is this area through here. Uh, relatively lightweight. Um, and by lightweight, I mean uh, for lighter weight cameras. You wouldn't put a big uh, cinema camera on this. It's, it's not quite sturdy enough. But this is, these, are, these are awesome cameras. I um, uh, beg your pardon, uh, tripods. These are awesome tripods. <laughs> <laughs> just, just go through the different parts of it if you could. OK, so this, this whole part from here to here is the head. Pan handle, uh, lock, drag counterbalance, which I'll go through in a sec. These are the legs all the way to the floor. These are two stage, these are two stage legs and they've got two, two clips here. You can undo the bottom ones. Okay. And, and you can get it up to its full height. Right. It's also got a, a, a mid spreader which you can lock and that stops the, the, uh, that stops the legs from splaying out. You can also undo them here, which is better for when you've got the camera all the way down uh, to the, the bottom of, of, the, of the tripod travel, you undo those and it'll spread right out. So it'll get the camera as low as, low as, as you possible, can. yeah. yeah. Which, is, which is what that's for. Um, so you can, if you're in a tighter space, you can pull this up and you can tighten that all the way up and then that again stops them from splaying out. Uh, so this part here is the bowl and this is the nut. You can undo that so that you can re-level the head. And any decent tripod has a little level in there. What's that for? Uh, well, so that you can level the head part. Uh, often you, your legs might be a bit like that, you know, if, you've, if you're on an even ground, and uh, that way you can re-level the head uh, by using the level. One of the things that I like about the little millers is that they have a little light here. It lights up, um, you know, the, the pan and tilt, and also, and more importantly, your bubble. Because then when it's dark and your bubbles, you can't oh, see so the bubble. Oh, so you actually see the controls Yeah, because if you look down, so you look down in there and you can see the bubble lit up. Right. What now, do you mean by the drag? What's okay, that? so the drag, you want, a, you want a little bit of tension on your head, sometimes, depending on the application, depending on what you're shooting. You might want a bit of drag. In other words, if you, you've got the dials here, and they, on this particular model, they go from one through to five, on both the pan and the tilt. Now, when you engage it, you can engage it up to, say, three. It'll be a lot harder to It adds more to tension to it. It adds much more right. tension to it. Uh, you want to sometimes match those so that you've got as much pan and tilt drag tension. Uh, so are there situations where you want that higher and lower? Yeah, for instance, some people, there's a, you know, a, a look that some people have which is called loose head, where you, know, you just want the camera kind of just wandering a little bit. You might, if you want to, you could wind all the tensions off completely and then there would be, it would just wander around just wander around. Or if it's very windy, you might want to wind it all up to five. Or you're following horses or cars or something, and you're on a very long lens, then you might want to, you know, have much more drag or tension. Right, so depending on the shot and how much you're panning and tilting, that's right. Whatever feels right for what you're trying to get. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so on the on the uh, on the plate here, uh, you've got a um, the ability to balance, which is very important depending on where your camera's. Uh, so that's on is. the camera, you, if it's got a big lens or something, so it's front heavy, you, might you push that back. back. Actually, right. yeah. um, the other thing, it's got this particular model, a lot of them have, but this particular model's got a one to five, uh, a one to four counterbalance. So when there's no, uh, there's no tension, you've got the tensions wound to zero, um, there's, and there's no counterbalance on it. <coughs> the counterbalance allows the camera to come back to centre, right. and that way it'll stop the camera from overbalancing. If you have it too stiff and you don't have enough tension, it's a very lightweight camera, you're going to push against it, which you don't want, so you can just wind the counterbalance off. But very important to stop your camera from crashing. So um, in terms of, the, there's lots of different tripods. We're looking at a particular Miller model at the moment, yep. which is an Australian brand. Yep. Uh, there's many brands, many sizes and types. So where does this fit into the larger range of tripods available? Oh, this is good for, you know, maybe mid-sized cameras. Uh, you know, something might be awesome for a Scarlett or for an F3 or, you know. They're, they're great. Uh, it's great. It's got a 100mm bowl, which fits a lot of things. You get them in 150mm bowls, 
um, in, in many different um, variations. So basically, the bigger the tripod, the sturdier, the bigger the weight it can carry, the, the bigger the camera generally, yeah? Yeah, heavier. yeah. When it's a really heavyweight camera, you want a big head underneath it uh, to allow you to do you know, as smooth a move as possible. There are other, uh, um, other heads that have wheels here, and they're called geared heads. Mm. And again, that's for a very heavyweight camera that you'd put on that for a lot of the smaller uh, cameras these days. This kind of thing's pretty good. And you also have other styles of legs. You can have single stage, you can have a third stage, you can have telescope ones. Um, they're they're normally for much smaller cameras though, yeah? Yeah, they do, they, yeah, yeah. You can put, you know, you can put some reasonable weight on them, but uh, different, depends on what you're doing. And it also depends on your personal preference. If you've used one for a while, you might want to stick with that. Most tripods have little feet on them, which, you know, as you're showing there, allow the, um, the foot to come off and that way you can just use the spikes. The spikes are also good for grass or um, places where you want the, the tripod to dig in. Mm -hmm. That's what they're for. The On pads, the beach with the sand. <laughs> yeah, maybe the pads tend to be for harder surfaces because the spikes won't work on the harder surfaces. So you'll have a removable pad like that. And they're also good for locking into things like Wally dollies, other doorway dollies, where again you take the feet off and it'll, the, the, the spikes will lock into, you know, to the, the bottom of the dolly and, and hold the tripod. Stuff. I often like to get this arm and like put it under here, you know, it would be... Uh, driving with the breast. Driving with that, and so yeah, you control it more like that. So you've got both hands free, cool. and, you know, and that's why it had this looser. Uh, I often find that's a good way to control the tripod. I've never it's seen anybody do that, that's <laughs> good. So I love that, you see what I love about operating? Operating's a, an awesome thing to do, and uh, when you have a really lovely pan and tilt head, you're going to have a great day no matter how you use it. Mm. Thank you very much, Paul. You're welcome.